Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm making a video for those who are looking to start an eBay store in 2024 or who are very new at it and they're still learning. Several of you have told me that you want to start reselling but you don't know where to start. There's a lot of information out there and you're getting confused. So I felt like it was my responsibility that if I was influencing people to wanting to pursue selling on eBay that I needed to put out a video of a step-by-step -step roadmap of what I would do if I was going to start over again. During my first year as a reseller on eBay, I did $140,000 in sales by myself. On the second year, my husband joined me in my eBay store and we were able to do $240,000 in sales. And this year we're on track to doing $300,000 in sales or more. So I walked you through every single thing that you need to know when starting an eBay store so that you are building on success. Even if you are already selling on eBay, hopefully you'll find value out of this video. Maybe I do something that um, answers a question that you've been having or, or anything like that, or you can improve your eBay store. But anyway, I thank you for your time for watching this video. It turned out to be a lot longer than I had planned, but I didn't wanna take any shortcuts and cut out anything that could be very beneficial to even just one of you guys. So I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get into it. All right, so I've moved to the kitchen table because I personally do my best work at the kitchen table. So the first step that we're going to be focusing on is picking a niche. I know there's some controversy of whether you should niche down or be an everything seller. However, this is exactly what I would do step by step. And I fully wholeheartedly believe that you should niche down and focus on one category and get deep knowledge of it. There's a great saying that I really enjoy um, is be a foot wide, but a mile deep versus a mile wide, a foot deep. This is exactly what I did when I started out. I focused on one niche. Nothing could distract me. Nothing could stop me. And I learned so much about that category. So we're gonna go to the paper. I'm just gonna write some stuff out so you're not just looking at me the entire time. So let's get to picking out a niche. Step one, and I do not have the best handwriting. Niche. All right, so I'm going to jot down a few different niches. The most popular one is clothing because if you're in America, tons of clothes everywhere. Some other really popular niches would be toys, video games. These are, this is extremely hot. A lot of people know this. Shoes, collectibles. I know some people do antiques. We got card sellers. So this will be like your Pokemon, magic. I know in the group we've got quite a few people that do car parts. I know some people also do furniture. So I'm just jotting down some of these ideas just so you get an idea just to help start getting your brain turning on what might interest you. There are a lot more categories than this uh, for the niches, but this is as many as I can think of. If you have any other niche ideas, feel free to share them in the comments. One thing that I want to remind you guys is when you're starting out, it's not so much that you picked the right niche, it's more so what your environment has the most of, kind of what you have a natural knack of knowledge for anyway, um, something that you already like, something that you're able to find really consistently in your area. I have a friend who decided to niche in car parts, not because she was like a mechanic. She said that's just what her partner had lying around the house a lot because he was really into cars. And so she's like, hey, we've got a lot of car parts. I'm just going to start here and start learning this niche. She didn't immediately just go out and start doing clothing. She just saw what she had around herself and kind of what she already had a leg up in, and that was car parts. Kyle started out doing video games because whenever he was a teenager, he would be on Craigslist trying to find like a video game console. He really wanted and he knew kind of market value, um, what those video game consoles were going for and the games that were with it. And so he would know naturally if it was a really good deal or not. And then eventually whenever he wanted to sell the console and the video games to go buy another, he was able to make a profit. So he already had an advantage with video games. For me, I picked clothing because at the time Kyle was going around 
and just sourcing everything. And I have a natural tendency towards clothing. And as I got into it, I really fell in love with jeans. So I, I went really niche into jeans. I've broadened my knowledge out to just pants now. You don't have to go that niche if you don't want to. I just hyper focus on stuff. But you can just focus on women's clothing or men's clothing. There's people in the reselling group that I'm in who just focus on comfort women's shoes, athletic shoes, dress shoes. There's some people who just focus on men's suits. So this is what I'm saying. It's not so much the niche that you're picking that will determine if you're successful or not. It's more so that you pick a niche and you learn about it so much so that you become successful. So now that we've got our niche, the next step that I would do is I would start setting my standards. This is one thing that I did not do whenever I first started out. I was just trying to find something that was profitable. I really don't recommend that starting out because that is a huge grind. What I do recommend is spending a dollar and at least 10 times in it. Like give yourself a lot of runway with that dollar. I hope you guys are enjoying the video. I just wanted to pop in and say that I do have an Instagram that I'm trying to grow. So if you also have Instagram and you wanna see some updates and day-to-day -day life that I've been doing, be sure to give me a follow over there. And also if you've been liking what I've been saying so far, be sure to give the video a like so somebody else like you can find this video. And if you really like the content, make sure that you're subscribed. That way you don't miss out on any other videos. Step two, standards. You want standards, okay? So when it comes to standards, there are two metrics that I would focus on when starting out. That's going to be your profit margin and sell through. So a little bit about the profit margin, that's a little self-explanatory. It's what you're going to be making after all your expenses are paid and what you're left over with. Sell through is basically how desirable is this item. If there's 1,800 items listed, but only two sold, I would not pick that up because it's clearly flooded and nobody wants this item. But if you find an item where there's only 100 listed and 400 sold, that means it is a hot commodity. Like there are way more buyers than there are sellers. You wanna be more in the hot commodity business, not the storage junk business. So starting out, especially if you don't have a lot of capital to work with, still recommend not jumping into a lower profit model yet because you have a lot of learning to do. So for the profit margin, I mean, I wish I could say do $20 profit model to where every single item you sell, you're making at least $20 profit. That would be a great starting point. If you can do that, run with that. However, I personally, in my business, find it very hard to do a $20 profit model because of the niche that I'm in. Um, but I do recommend, I can recommend though that it is a little bit easier to start out at a $15 profit model. So whenever you get an item, make sure you're making at least $15 off of that. I will get into how we can calculate the profit margin in just a little bit. So let's just start out with a $15 profit margin model for your store. Um, again, if you can go higher, fantastic. The higher you start, the more you can work your way down as you grow. And if you start lower, you're running out of room, okay? So give yourself, like I said, a lot of runway. Start up as high as you can, realistically. Okay, sell through. So on the eBay app, which I'll show you, they give you a 90 day look into what's sold. And that's where I was saying, if you see that something has 100 items listed and you go to the sold section and 400 are sold within those 90 days, technically this has a 400% sell through, which is phenomenal. 
I don't know a ton of items that have that, but that'd be freaking awesome. Personally, what I do in my niche, I try to aim for around at least a 50% sell through. That means half the items that are listed are sold every 90 days. Starting out, I do not recommend going lower than 50. The higher you can get, the better, just because you wanna make sure the things you have sell. I know that may seem like super advanced. You may not understand what I just said, so I'm gonna jump over to the computer and walk this through with you so you can see it visually. As we're heading over to the computer to do some research for your niche and your profit margin, I just wanted to share the benefits and the reasons why I feel like niching down is important. Kyle reminded me of this, so I just wanted to make sure this is inserted into the video. So the, the benefits of niching and picking one category are one, you have the supplies that you need for every single item because it's all the same and you're not picking out some big things, some small things, heavy things, breakable, fragile, whatever. You have one item. You're building your organization system around that one item. You are building your supplies around that one item. And whenever it comes to sourcing, you're looking for that one item. Plus, as you sell more on eBay, um, people will start following your store because they like what you've got and um, they'll, you'll have a lot more repeat buyers that way and you have a better opportunity for having somebody buy multiple things from you because you're selling one item. If you're selling Pokemon cards, then you have a higher chance of selling 10 Pokemon cards to one person versus an everything seller selling 10 items to one person. Okay. So there's two things that I use whenever it comes to research. I use eBay sold comps and I use the eBay fee calculator to figure out what my profit margin is going to be. And I'm going to show you how to use those right now. I want to make sure that I am spending enough time thoroughly explaining this portion of research because this is the most important part of your eBay store. The better you are at this, the better your store will be. That's how I'm able to have a small store and sell it four times over in a year versus some stores that have thousands and thousands of items and only sell a small portion every year. The more research and more time you spend in your niche, the better your store is going to be, the more money you'll make, the less time you'll be sitting on your items and you'll just be down the road making more money. So I'm going to do this as detailed as I can be while trying to be open-minded that every niche is a little bit different. Try to view this as what you would do for your niche. I have to pick a niche for this example just so I can actually show you. So that's why I'm doing it with clothing. The category I'm going to pick is shirts. I don't really know much about shirts. Again, you pick your niche. This will be my niche that I'm picking for the example, but you search for it the same exact way. So let's do it. So we go to ebay.com. I'm going to start searching for men's shirts. So I'm gonna type in men's shirt. And here I'm going to see on the left-hand side navigation that there are some categories to choose. So under men's clothing, I see shirts. And let's do some casual button-down shirts because I have plenty of those in my thrift stores and they're just everywhere for me. Um, we'll start out with some short sleeves since we're heading into summer. And as far as the sizing goes, I'm not going to mess with any of that. I'm not going to mess with the brands, the colors, the patterns, not going to do any of that. Um, I will look into the pre-owned because chances are if it's going to be new. I'll look at pre-owned just basically because there's a lot more pre-owned shirts out there than there are new shirts in the thrift store. So this is where we're actually going to be looking at is the price of what they're listed for. If your goal is to make at least $15 profit off of a shirt, the shirt has to be listed for more than $15, obviously. Since I've been in thrift stores, I know that typically my thrift stores 
can very easily list or price a shirt for at least $5. So I know that I will be spending at least $5 for my item. And if I'm wanting to make $15 profit off of it, I know that it's going to have to be listed for more than $20. Another thing that we have to think about is that eBay does charge fees for using their platform to sell on it. So on average, eBay takes between 10 to 15% of your final sales price. So we know we've got at least a $5 buy cost and we want to make at least $15 profit off of it. And we know that say eBay will take probably $3 out of it. So now we're at needing to have at least a $23 list price and then you may need to buy some materials or just pay for some of the gas so i would say it, i'm going to be looking for shirts that i can list for at least 25 dollars so we're going to go over here to the left hand navigation and we're going to put a minimum of 25 of 25 dollars now you can tell that there are 200, oh geez, you can tell that there are 220,000 results for men's shirts in the casual button down shirts, short sleeves, that are listed pre owned for at least $25. Now, I'm not sourcing all around the nation, all around the world. I'm gonna be sourcing in my area. So, what you'll wanna do is do a within 25 mile radius for that item location. So now that we're searching within 25 miles, and you can even make this broader to 100 miles, 50 miles, it just depends on where you're going. Um, I'll do 50 miles for this example. But as you can tell, now it went from 220,000 results to 1800 results. So there's 1800 items listed. That doesn't mean every single thing on this page you should pick up. We wanna look at actually what sold. So you're gonna go over to here and it's gonna say show only sold items. This is what people actually spent money on. You can tell that out of that 1800, there's only 194 results of actual sold shirts that meet the metrics, that meet our standards. Now I'm going to dive in and I'm going to see what brands, what sizes. I'm gonna to try to find some patterns, try to figure out why these things are selling. In your niche, you need to see what most people spend money on that meet your metrics and figure out why they're spending money on that. So like this J. Crew short sleeve linen button down shirt. This is cool. I, I personally think this is cool. The brand is good. It's short sleeve. So it's gonna be great for the summer season. It's linen. I know linen material naturally is higher quality than polyester or something like that. And it's got a cool color on it. It looks nice, easy breezy. It looks like I can see somebody who wants beachy chill vibes without wearing a Hawaiian shirt wanting to wear this shirt. And somebody did, they bought it for $30 plus shipping. I wish I could say that you just look at that and go buy it and repeat. However, now we need to look at the sell through. Just because something sold for $35 plus shipping doesn't mean that it will do that all the time. Because what we don't know right now is how many of those shirts in that same brand, same style are listed and how many are being sold. Because if there's a thousand of them listed and only two sold, that means there's way more product than there is demand. So we're gonna go in and we're going to search for that specific item to see if it is actually desirable. We can tell that there's 329 of these listed. And we're gonna scroll down to the sold comps. We're gonna see how many are actually sold. 145 have been sold. There's 329 listed. That puts us at a 44% sell through rate, which I think is great because it meets my metric of being around 50%. But also this is the stuff that is being sold in the past 90 days, which has been winter at this point in time. 
So that means that number will only go up as we head into warmer seasons. So now that we have the sell-through rate is meeting our standards that we want, I'm going to organize this from highest to lowest and now see kind of like a common price point that will be easily sellable at that certain price point. So the highest it's ever been sold for is $45 and the lowest it's ever been sold for in the past 90 days is all the way below 20. So we, we've got a really good example right here. Organizing from highest to lowest versus recently sold. Um, I do it like that because recently sold all of the super low ball like they should have priced it higher and somebody's gotten a really good deal on it those are obviously going to sell quickly and more often than the market value ones so listing it from highest to lowest and then working your way down to try to find a consistent price point that has been sold at for um, will give you a good indicator of what the actual market value is i personally do not recommend pricing it as high as possible or as low as possible. I like to be like in the middle somewhere. So scrolling through here, I would say that a lot of these shirts can easily be sold for $28.99, $29.99, which is fantastic. So I'm so happy we found an item. So now that when we go to the store, we can look for the shirt. And if we see it, we know that it will meet our metrics. Do that over and over and over and over again until you have a great list of items that fit your niche, that fit your standards, that you know the price point, that you gotta buy it for because you know how much it'll sell for. Do that and then go sourcing. You wanna front load all your knowledge before you even go to the stores, before you even go to the flea market so you're not spending and wasting all your time trying to do the research in the moment when you could just be going out and shopping and getting everything before everybody else does. So now that we have that, we're gonna head over to the eBay fee calculator because this will actually show us what we're working with whenever it comes to profit. I recommend doing this um, constantly um, as you are growing and learning new brands, just so you are making sure you are always hitting your profit margin, your profit goals, and you're not accidentally decreasing it. So this is the uh, eBay fee calculator. This is what I've used many, many, many times and I still use it to this day to make sure that I am still on track and on target for what I want um, as my average profit for the store. What we're gonna do is we're going to just pretend we sold our item, that we bought it and we sold it and we're gonna see how much money we actually made. So with this J. Crew linen shirt, say I found just a plain teal blue one like this one. I sold it for $28.99. It says sold $28.99. They charged $5.90 for shipping. So I'm just gonna round up to six. And like I said, in the store, I believe they usually charge at least $5 for shirts. At this point, if I haven't ever shipped anything. I wouldn't know how much this costs. So I'm just going to assume it will cost me $6 since that's what was charged. You'll learn all about these little details as you gain experience and you actually know how much your stuff costs to ship and you can start playing with those numbers. So sold price $28.99. I charged the customer $6. I bought it from the store for $5 and the shipping label to ship it out costs $6. And at this point, you won't have an eBay store because you're just starting out. Your seller level, you're starting out, you're gonna be above standard. Try not to be below standard, that's bad. Uh, no overseas sales, don't worry about that. Promoted, we're not worrying about promotions because that's just a tool for now. We'll move on down to the item category. My item is in the clothing category. Each category on eBay has a little bit different of fee charge. So make sure you have the right category selected. So. It does the math for you. eBay is going to take $5 and I'm going to profit $18.95. That meets my metric. So the sell through rate is there and my profit margin is there. Easy, no brainer, pick up. So now that we have sourced an item that is in the niche that you've chosen 
and it hits the standards that you're wanting, it's now time to process this item. This is now where we're going to prep it, whether it needs to be washed, cleaned, repaired, tested, whatever your niche requires for that product, it's time to prep it. And once it's prepped and ready to go, then it's time to photograph it. During this time, you're also gonna want to get some supplies like either a, oh, like either a ruler or packing tape if you're gonna use boxes. I recommend a scale or you can use a home scale if it's heavy enough. But if you're working with lighter weight stuff, a scale is nice to have just so you know how much your item weighs for shipping purposes. For my niche, I don't need a lot of supplies, but uh, if you're repairing stuff or cleaning stuff up, like if it's old and you're trying to restore it, you'll need some of those supplies to restore, repair, test stuff out, whether it's batteries or cords, cables, who knows what your niche needs. This is where the research comes in handy. You do not need to have a fully built out photography station to get started. All you have to do is just have a clean open space with good lighting and you're off to the races. A great thing to start out with is just heading outside using your driveway, sidewalk, like whatever you need, get the daylight shining on the object. The more accurate of a color and representation of the item you have, the happier your customer will be. So just make sure that the pictures look like the item. You'll also want to make sure that you include a ton of details in these pictures so that it makes it a better experience for your customer. They are able to see it from all sides. They're able to see it close up. Definitely make sure to include every single defect that this item may have, even if it's new. If it's in a new box and it has a little dent in the box, be sure to photograph it. One, it'll help give your customer a better experience. And two, if your customer is unhappy with the condition, but you did photograph it and make note of it, eBay will have your back on it. So now that we have your pictures ready to go, you can just use your phone. We'll head on over to the eBay app. I do recommend that you eventually um, transfer to making your listings on the computer. That way it's faster and easier, more comfortable whenever you're doing, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 plus items every single day. But if you're just listing one item a day for now, the phone is fine. What you're gonna wanna do is find a listing that has already sold, that's very similar to your item, and you'll hit sell similar. It does not have to be an exact carbon copy of your item. It just has to be something similar. I'll jump over onto my computer that way I can show you how I make my listings. So you found the item. Say I went to the thrift store. Imagine me holding a J. Crew linen short sleeve shirt here, purchased it for $5. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to my eBay store. I'm going to pull up something that was similar. What we're going to do is we're gonna click on that listing that sold. We're gonna scroll down to have one to sell, sell now. We're gonna hit that. It's gonna pop up with the listing categories that you have to fill out. This is where you'll upload your pictures. This will look basically the same on the phone. I highly recommend getting your photos from your phone to your computer just to keep practicing good practice because when you do grow and you're listing 30, 40, 50 items a day, um, you'll want to be doing this on your computer. Um, so either get your pictures over to your computer so you can drag them over here, or if you're gonna stay with the phone, then you just upload your pictures there. Upload your photos into the listing, and whenever it comes to the item title, we're going to try to make it as searchable and search-friendly for your customer as possible. We're going to start out with the brand of your item and then describing what that item is um, so for this case, the brand is J. Crew, and the item is a shirt. Um, and then we're going to put in that it's a men's size medium and that the color is purple. So that those first few words, first five-ish words, 
are going to be the most impactful to tell eBay what you're selling and be able to give it to the customer that's searching for it as quickly as they can. After that, um, after the color, then we're just going to put in a lot of descriptive keywords just to narrow in on the type of shirt. So for the customer that's not only just searching for a purple J. Crew shirt, they want it to be linen. So we'll make sure that it's linen, button down, uh, short sleeve. It's more for like a casual, preppy, beachy vibe, whatever you want to describe it as, then you have the freedom to describe it. But make sure that the front half of your title is as basic and as strong as that. Um, that way eBay knows who to point your item to. As you go down, you fill out your required item specifics. You have to fill these out um, to even list your item. And then fill out as much additional details as you can without, um, you know, just putting something in there just to have it in there. Just select what is whatever the option is that eBay has. And if there's not a good option, just leave it blank. It's better to leave it blank than type something in it. So do that. Um, if there's a required item specific that is not in the drop down, sometimes that happens to me. For some reason, sometimes brand, not all the brands are in certain categories in the clothing niche. So I have to type in the brand name there because I have to have something there to list it. That's the only time I type things in. You'd say whether it's pre-owned, new with tag, be very honest with the condition of your item. It is best to um, set expectations low for the item and then be wowed by how much better it is versus trying to make it sound like it's the best ever and you get their hopes up really high and then they get the item and it's not what they thought. You want happy customers. Down here, you want it to do buy it now. I do not recommend auctions. Set your price. We would put $28.99. And then as far as shipping goes, I do not recommend local pickup. We're not probably working with freight right now. <laughs> so just do standard shipping. Um, this is where having a scale will come in handy. You can go ahead and put the package weight. And you, if you kind of already have an idea of how big the item is going to be in the package, fill it out there. Um, do not do calculated cost because that always overestimates how much shipping will actually cost no matter what and no matter where you are, no matter where your customer is. And that will scare off a lot of your customers whenever they see a ridiculous shipping charge. So do flat rate. And I know you're kind of shooting in the dark at this point, but this is where seeing what others charge will come in handy. So we saw that the other person sold it for $5.90. Um, I'm going to just say $6 for this because until you actually are doing this for a while, you actually won't know how much the average shipping cost is for your items. This is another good reason to reiterate why niching down is so important because you'll know exactly how, um, how much your average item weighs, how big the package is going to be, and how much it's going to cost to ship it. So another reason why niche for the win. You'll want to do, I prefer one business day handling time. Um, you can uh, ship out from your house if you can't make it to the post office. You'll have to schedule a pickup, a free pickup through your post office. Um, or if your mailman's cool, you just let them know like, hey, I'm gonna set out some packages by the mailbox or something. Can you take them with you and whatever. But recommend for now, just starting out, taking it to the post office so you see them scan it and it's all good and you don't worry about porch pirates or anything. Again, that's advanced eBay later on down the road. You don't have to worry about that right now. And then personally, I think everybody should offer returns. Um, I even would go to say offer free returns, um, mainly because you'll be more appealing to the customer. Definitely offering returns you have more protection as a seller from negative feedbacks or unhappy customers. Because like I said, one way or the other, whether or not you offer returns or not, the customer can return your item and it just, you get to choose the lesser of the two halves, basically. Sorry, there's this option that says require immediate payment when buyer uses buy it now. 
I would check mark that so that you're not waiting around for somebody to, you know, let their check clear or wait until Friday for payday and then they'll pay you. Just have somebody who's ready to buy, buy it now. And then you hit list. So now that you have your item listed, congratulations. Now it's time to store it. And as you can tell, I have boxes and shelves. It's in numerical order with these stickers that have numbers on them. This is my storage system. Your storage system for now can just be a box. If you're liking doing this and you are buying more and more items, I highly recommend finding an actual storage system that will keep things organized so you're not losing anything and you can easily find it whenever it's time to ship it out. But until then, if you're just doing some small stuff or it's not a lot, you know, just having a designated corner of your house is good enough for right now. So you're eventually going to sell your very first item on eBay and while you're waiting for it to sell, I highly recommend going out and gathering the shipping supplies that you might need. That way, when it sells, you're ready to ship out because the faster you can ship out your item, the better customer experience you, that your customer will have. And eBay likes that a lot and they'll boost you if you do it enough. When you're first starting out, you actually don't get paid until the item's delivered. So that's another reason why you should ship out as quickly as you can. There are a few free options for shipping from USPS. They have free mailing boxes. It's just a mailing box. It is not a flat rate price, so it will be how much ever it weighs. For, that'll determine the price. However, if you get the flat rate envelopes, these are a flat rate charge, so whatever you fit in here is the same price no matter how much it weighs. We used to do the padded flat rate for our jeans. Um, then we found out that we could save a few dollars every month if we switched to the envelopes. And then since the post office has come out with ground advantage, we now pay for mailing envelopes. We now pay for poly mailers. I think this comes out to about 15 cents each, um, but we save tons of money now by shipping out in this. So you're going to have to just see what works for your niche and that's just gonna be a learning experience for you and testing some, some stuff out. If you're shipping out hard goods or anything that's breakable, I definitely recommend getting some sort of padding like bubble, like bubbles, shipping peanuts, anything that would make sure that your product does not break during shipment because that would be a bad experience for the customer and bad for you. It's just bad in general, so make sure you're packing well. One more thing that I need to include is when it comes to printing out the shipping label, you can just use your home printer for now. Um, we have a thermal printer with specific labels, sticky labels, so it just makes our packing process a lot faster, um, but those are expensive. Or worst case scenario, I do believe eBay gives you a QR code so you can take the package up to the post office and have them scan it and they'll print out a label there. Okay. While you're waiting for your item to sell, if you get anybody asking you questions on eBay, um, be sure to respond to them promptly. Um, you can send out an offer if somebody watches your item, you'll see a pop-up that'd be like, oh, you can send out offers to buyers. Um, sending out an offer, you know, a small percentage off, um, might help entice and close that sale. But yeah, just some good business practices. There's a lot more tools that you can use as you progress in your eBay career that will help you sell your items faster. But I highly recommend not really worrying about using any of those tools until you know your niche and know how to sell your items well without it. The tools will only improve it better. I don't want you using the tools as a crutch. I want you to use the tool as a tool. So I'm not gonna go over those tools. That can be for a later video. I recommend waiting until you sell that item before you go out and purchase more because the last thing I want you to do is tie up a bunch of money into inventory that you may have made mistakes purchasing and maybe not purchased it. Um, I'd rather have you buy something and make sure it sells and then use that money to go buy 
another item and another item and then sell those and just keep building your way up to where you are consistently selling your items and not holding on to them and you're making the money you want to make. The last thing you want is to have tons of money wrapped up in inventory that's just sitting around and not selling. That is a bad spot to be in. You can work your way out of it, but the only way to work out of it is to do exactly what I just showed you and research and find the items that do sell, that people do want to buy, that the demand is there and it meets the standards you've set for yourself. Once you've found your groove, I recommend committing to consistency. Whether that consistency is listing one item a day or two items a day, maybe even five items a day if you're being a rock star at this. But commit to consistency, that way eBay can start relying on your consistency and they can start giving you a consistent amount of traffic and they can work with you. And if you're up and down with how you list and how you run your eBay store, eBay is going to give you up and down traffic and sales. So be as consistent as you can every single day, starting out slow. Do not set super high expectations for yourself because I want you to be able to reach your goals. So plugging into a community, whether it's joining a group on Facebook um, or you know searching forums on Reddit, I recommend finding a community that is of a winning mindset. Um, we do not have space for people who negatively talk about eBay. We want to have winners talking about eBay. That's why I personally recommend joining the group that I'm in. It's with Tekken Sports. I'll have a link to his group down below. He also has a YouTube channel you can check out to learn more through him because everything I know I've learned through him. But I definitely recommend plugging yourself into a community of winning, like-minded uh, people who are also selling on eBay just so any questions you've got or worries or troubles, problems, anything you've got, you can put it in the group and you'll get winner answers. For those of you that are visual learners and you want to see this be done in real time and have somebody actually do this so you can follow along, I have wonderful news. Kyle and I are actually going to start a series where we start an eBay store from scratch, from zero. We'll share the store with you guys so you can see exactly what we're doing and exactly what our titles are. And we're going to literally walk you through every single thing we do with that store until we get it to the point where it's generating $3,000 profit a month. So get excited for it. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on it. While you're waiting for the series to start, Go ahead and check out some of my other videos that YouTube thinks that you would like. Have a great day. Bye.